Countries that are devastated by war can, of course, take years to be rebuilt. But 3D printing technologies are being used in Ukraine to show that even in the midst of war, it is possible to build homes and infrastructure in a fraction of the time. A 3D printed school is currently being built in Lviv. It is the first project in Ukraine to use 3D printing in the construction industry. Well, live now to Henrik Lund Nielsen, founder of Cobod International, who is on the building site in Lviv. Welcome to you. Thanks very much for being with us. So how does it work? How are you doing this? Well, as you can see, it's a printer that moves automatically around. It can move in the X, Y and Z direction and it extrudes concrete, which then after a while hardens up and then you can put the next layer on. And how is it going? It's going okay. I mean, uh, this is uh, what has been done here is uh, 135 square meters, which has been, uh, it was started on Thursday and we have Tuesday today. So this is uh, how far they've come after three to four days. Uh, and tell us what inspired you to do this project there. Well, from Cobot side and we are the company behind the technology here that we are watching, we felt that uh, we had to do something uh, to, let's say, honor the fighting will that Ukraine has shown, where basically Ukraine is fighting on behalf of all of the democratic world. So we wanted to donate something and we were contacted by a charity organization called Team for UA. And uh, they asked us if we could uh, provide a printer so that we could uh, 3D print the first school here in Lviv. So we can obviously see it happening behind you. How long does it take? How many people does it involve? How, how big a project is it? Well, the team, is, the, the team actually consists of three people. It's a, it's a Danish team. It's our Danish customer. Uh, that is that is doing the printing, uh, using our technology and doing it for Team for UAE. UA. What challenges have you faced? Because this obviously the country is at war. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, but actually, I noticed a lot of uh, construction is going on. So you can say uh, there's a lot of uh, positive vibes now. And obviously, we hope that this will be a beacon also, that uh, there is some hope uh, installed in Ukrainian people that there is a future and we can rebuild the country. Some of the challenges we have faced is like we're using 99% local material for the concrete. And so we had to adjust the recipe to the materials that we found here. And that took a couple of days. We're looking at some wider shots of the base of the school. Um, is that done by traditional methods? Is it kind of um, a joint project, so a hybrid? So, or is it all yeah. with a yep. 3D printer? No, no, it's correct. Uh, you actually, we have two 3D printed parts that together makes up 270 square meter. And then the rest of the building is, let's say, wood that combines the two 3D printed parts and makes it a total of, of uh, more than 400 square meters. And I guess, that, you know, you would say, well, th this is the future if it can be done quickly. And does it compare cost-wise? It also compares cost-wise. So it's much faster, it's much cheaper, and it's more sustainable. And as you can see, we can do it pretty fast. And, I mean, if you use your hands and... Uh, usual brick and mortar, that would be very difficult to achieve this uh, this amount of progress in a few days. And are you looking at rolling this out elsewhere across the country? Well, uh, yeah, basically both in Ukraine and, and uh, you know, Turkey and other places that have been uh, devastated in one way or the other. This is a high potential, but we already have it rolled out in 25 countries so far around the world. But yes, uh, Team for UA is planning to, to roll it out further out here in Ukraine. Uh, we're just going to have a look at what it's going to look like when it's finished. Um, so just r remind us again, take us through the time frame for this. Yeah, so the 3D printing will be done uh, probably by next week. And then the wood parts will, will come up. And so, but then we go back to, let's say, conventional building. It takes longer time. So in, in a few months, it will be entirely ready, the building. But the 3D printing is already done next week. And then the, the printer moves back again. And is this, when you say, you know, it's some traditional methods, some 3D printing, do you envisage a scenario where eventually we'll all be 3D printed? Well, it depends on the kind of look that you want to have. The architect here wanted to have a soft look of the wood, and then therefore you cannot only 3D print it. But obviously we have lots of customers that are doing only 3D printed buildings, but where the entire thing is made out of 3D printing. You say you're in countries all over the world. How much training does it take to use this equipment we're looking at behind you? That, that's correct. It is new equipment, and like any new equipment or new software that you have to learn, you have to have some training, and we provide two weeks of training, and then the customer is good to go on their own. Then they can print on their own. 
and how difficult is it to transport the equipment that you need? It is quite large, but I suppose that's the case for, for any building infrastructure. Well, it actually can be taken uh, down in parts. It's modular built, so it's, it's very easy. And, and it's transported on one truck. Uh, that's it. Uh, so you can take it anywhere. Put it in a truck and take it anywhere. And the cost? So you have a factory on wheels, if you like. And because, just, you know, you can bring it anywhere. And just briefly, the cost, right. how does it compare to traditional methods? Well, the first project people will do, they will typically not save. But once they get the hang of it, they do it faster and faster, and then they save money, significantly compared to the traditional way of doing it. Henrik Lund-Nielsen, great to talk to you. Thanks very much for taking us through this.